John William Ash, Your Excellency, thank you very much for accepting this interview. Everybody is trying to find an answer. President Obama was talking last night about a uh, warning shot in Syria. Mrs. Merkel uh, was talking today after his meeting with Prime Minister David Cameron about strong proofs that in Syria we have a chemical weapon. What is your position with uh, this issue, the most important issue of the moment at the global level? Well, as you know, as President of the General Assembly, I do not have a personal opinion. Um, but let me just say from an organizational point of view, um, member states did ask the UN to go in to conduct an inspection and we are all awaiting the results of that inspection. Member states, either individually or collectively, do have certain sovereign rights and they may choose to exercise them outside of the UN process, but that's entirely up to those member states. But right now we are trying to find some answers. If we have proofs that Assad regime was using chemical weapon in Syria against his own people, what do you think that the response should be? Well, I would imagine, again, speaking from the UN perspective, there is a process by which these matters are dealt with. And I would imagine the Security Council, which is the body organized to deal with this issue, would then take up that issue and act accordingly. Some people are afraid of going with this issue in the Security Council because some people are trying to figure out what kind of position will be there. And some of them, they, will, they are thinking that Russia will vote no to go to, to, to Syria. You know all these positions. So do you think that to the global level, should, uh, the, the leaders should be afraid to come with this issue on, the, on, the, on this level? Well, if we did request collectively the UN to investigate the allegations and they are in the process of doing so, I would think, um, certainly from an international perspective, we would want to see what the outcome of that investigation is. And then um, I believe the Security Council would be duty bound to take action based on the results of that investigation. Some people are afraid of what can be in Syria and starting from that point. Already we have there some Russian uh, 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 troops, I mean, uh, uh, naval uh, uh, things. Uh, we have uh, NATO troops and we are afraid of what can be if something is happening there. Do you, you are a diplomat and you, of course, you believe in diplomacy. It's this way close it's anything that the global community should do at this level I mean diplomatically speaking well I would imagine um, the answer to that question is now unfold unfolding um, for our very eyes in that the UN a credible organization which everyone recognizes has been called on to conduct an investigation of certain allegations we have been told by the UN that they're in the process of doing so and will come out with a report on what they, do, what they find. So we would at least want that process to be complete before moving to another process. We have any news. When we are going to have uh, the reports from your experts? <laughs> well, that question you'd have to put to the Secretary General of the, the United Nations, since he represents the organization. Uh, I am just a member yeah. state. I'm just saying that um, we are all awaiting that report. The UN itself, I'm sure, is cognizant of that fact, and we will see what happens when that report comes out. Could you tell us what are your expectations to the 68th General Assembly? will be in a few days. Mm -hmm and probably Syria will be one of the topics. But the global, at the global level, we have many other issues. Are, could you tell us more about your expectations to this meeting? Well, the 68th session um, of which I will serve as President of the General Assembly, 
I myself have outlined um, a number of initiatives, all has all related to what is called a post-2015 development agenda. Um, I will begin a process which my successors will carry on, and um, I hope that at the end of that session, we would have put in place the essential building blocks that would make up this development agenda. Talking about the global issues mm -hmm. and talking about the problems that the world is facing now, mm -hmm. what do you think are the most important three issues at the global level right now? Well, the question of, of poverty um, eradication, poverty alleviation, that is always uppermost, um, certainly in a majority of the minds of the, of the member states of the UN. The question of peace and security are two important issues as well. And ultimately, the um, economic growth of countries. So those are some of the issues that, are, um, that have always been prominent in the UN's agenda, then as it is now, and will be certainly for the foreseeable future. Could you tell us more about your goals for this session and for the the term that you will serve as a president of the General Assembly? When I was elected on June 14th, I indicated to the members that I wish to pursue the post-2015 development agenda um, set in the stage. Um, this, I believe, is one of the most important exercises that the UN will undertake um, in the foreseeable future. And in order for us to get there, we have to first understand what is it we're going to do exactly and what areas we would like to focus on. I've identified some, women, youth, employment, sustainable energy, water, sanitation. So these are some of the things that I think we ought to focus on. You have the feeling that the world is finding uh, responses, solutions to the, these global issues that we have. Because in the last years, we've seen what was happening around us. Do you have the feeling that the global community has the answers? Because sometimes we, are, we know the problems. We know mm -hmm. that the poverty is a problem. And so right. for so many years, we, we know that this is one of the biggest problems, if it's not the, the biggest problem of the, of the planet. Do we have the answer and the global community is understanding what sh she, she has to do to solve the problem of the poverty? Well, I am an optimist, so I will say yes. Um, to that to that question, um, but getting from idea to implementation is always a difficult one, and one um, cannot at least ignore the fact that um, prior to 2008 there was significant progress being made, but then we were hit by a series of economic crises, which has set us back a bit. So it's, some of us, and particularly in Europe, have not fully recovered. So once we get over that particular hump. I think you will start to see significant progress being made. You are serving as a diplomat and now you are serving the global community and I was asking myself these days, actually, actually yesterday, here in the States everybody was talking about what, was, what happened 50 years ago mm -hmm. with Martin Luther King's speech, with uh, that march and uh, the issue that he has a dream and now the right. dream it's, it's, it's more than a dream. Right. Could you tell us more about your dream as a diplomat for your career and for your life? It is something that it's like King's dream <laughs> and it's something, it's different. Could you tell more about your dream as a diplomat? Well, as a diplomat, um, one's dream always is that to have made a difference, uh, some, uh, to have contributed something that is regarded as somewhat significant. So I too have that dream, and I am hoping that at the end of my tenure as President of the General Assembly, my colleagues would look back and say, he made a difference, he made a contribution, he has contributed something. So those are my goals. They're very simple, but those are my goals. I'll be very happy to meet you after this <laughs> term and to to see if uh, your dream uh, came true and if these goals was realized. Mr. President, thank you very much indeed for, for this opportunity and it's such an honor for me having you here. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're much. welcome.